Hello, crafty friends, and welcome to my channel. I'm Adrienne Bosey of Alice Scraps Wonderland. Today, I'm going to share my process of creating a coastal shadow box using some of the Sizzix Summer 2024 dies and stencil, as well as the June Lindy's release, Under the Sea Magical Shakers. The shadow box is going to have a shaker pane element, so I start by creating the stenciled background for this with the Seascape stencil. I'm using Sizzix Smooth White cardstock and Distress Oxide inks on the first three layers of this four layer stencil. Once I'm done with the blending foam, I switch out my multi-tool to the long palette knife and then apply Sizzix dimensional paste through the fourth layer of the stencil. Next, I prep this large twisted chain frame from Renee Bouquet. I apply two layers of Ranger's super fine white embossing powder to the frame. Then I apply Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Glaze in Lost Shadow. This 8x10 shadow box needs two base layers for the project, with one of them fitting inside this insert. I measure out the inside dimensions and trim some white watercolor cardstock to fit. I always like to trim a little larger at first, then trim off small strips until the piece fits neatly inside this insert. Once it fits, I mark the center of the cardstock. Then I place the circle frame die in the center and cut it out of the cardstock. I use my Big Shot switch for this, which will fit the large piece of watercolor cardstock. Then I also cut the circle frame die from the stenciled background I created. I'll be using both cuts for this, but just wanted to show how this inner cut looks inside the circle pane. I'm using the Sizzix Smooth White cardstock with the Lindy's Under the Sea Magical Shakers. I've just cut up some different sized pieces to color with the shakers. I'll be cutting the Ocean Medley and Ocean Critters from these background papers I'll be making. To create the backgrounds, I'm using a fan brush, dipping one of the sides into one of the magicals after popping the shaker top off. Then I tap the brush over the paper, letting the chips, or should I say magicals, fall where they may. Then I spritz the cardstock with water and let the magic happen. For a few of the colors, I went back in with a little more or used the smooshing method to get some of the excess off my glass craft mat. And don't worry, I had some scraps of paper to pick up all that lovely color left over on my workspace, so none of it went to waste, giving me something ready to use on a future project.
After all of the backgrounds were dry, I cut out all of the shapes I wanted and sorted the cuts out into some scrapbook.com stack and sort trays. I also cut the base layer of the lobster and crab from some solid cardstock just to make them nice and sturdy. For the layered dies, I use Sizzix Express Glue to assemble them. Now that the dies are assembled, let's assemble the shaker element. I use some adhesive roller to adhere the stenciled background inside the shaker pane. Then I fill the shaker with some Rene Bouquet Starfish Kisses chipboard and printed chipboard by the Sea Starfish. I also add some beads from the Sizzix Mint Julep Beads and Sequin Mix plus two types of sequins from the Sorbet set. For a bit more sparkle, I add some of the smaller baubles from the Rene Bouquet Glass Moonstone Beads. To close off the shaker pane, I remove the protective film from the acetate cover. Then I remove the backing on the adhesive on the pane base and press the acetate into the adhesive. To make sure that the shaker and upper watercolor cardstock layer are adhered in the right place, I put the 8x10 sized white cardstock into the frame, then place the frame insert in, and finally the watercolor cardstock with the circle cut out in the center. This allows me to then remove the film off the adhesive on the back of the shaker pane and place it perfectly onto the smooth white cardstock. I want the watercolor cardstock to be the same height as the shaker pane, so I apply layers of 2 and 3 millimeter foam adhesive to the back of it. To give me a little wiggle time, I apply Sizzix Express Glue to the foam. Then I press the watercolor cardstock into place.
Next, I apply Express Glue to the frame that was cut from the stenciled background and press it onto the shaker pane. Then I begin fitting my elements in place, decorating around the shaker pane. I use foam adhesive and liquid adhesive to layer everything on. I didn't get this on camera, but I do attach the elements glued to the chipboard frame with Prima's heavy body gel. The finishing touch is adding some iridescent gems from Pink Fresh. I let the adhesive dry, but once it is, I place the project inside the shadow box frame. And that's how I created this DIY coastal shadow box using the new Sizzix and Lindy Summer Collections. I hope that it inspires you to create your own home decor. This pretty project will be gifted to my sister who loves the beach. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time, happy crafting!